Tens of thousands of homeowners across the country. I just feel like I've been robbed. Struggling financially and searching for help. They take a piece of you and that is totally unfair. Ended up signing a contract. I'm angry. Um, I don't like being taken advantage of. Locking them into a deal many didn't understand. She said, sign right there, sign right there, sign right there. And I just kept signing. She didn't tell me, well, this is what you're signing for. The equity in their home on the line for the next 40 years. It was a fast talk, and it was a sweet, fast talk. Reporters in eight cities worked together, investigating more than 12,000 liens to expose the impact. Did you know it lasts for 40 years? No, I did not. We've had complaints come into our office because they saw your stories. Now, seven attorneys general have filed lawsuits against the company. They had no heart in the whole situation. And 17 states scrambled to pass new laws. I'm thankful that I had the voice. This is Real Estate Racket. It all seems so easy. Make a few hundred or a thousand dollars with almost no commitment. All you had to do was agree to use a company called MV Realty as your realtor if you later decided to sell your house. No obligation to sell, and the ones who didn't might never have even thought about that deal again. But the homeowners you're about to meet, well, they did try to sell, and many found themselves caught in a scheme that cost them dearly. I'm basically down to my last couple bucks, and the man says, I'll give you $550, somebody will be out tonight, You'll sign the paper and you'll have your money in your checking account tomorrow. That's how it started for 78-year-old Donna Crane Zastadil back in December of 2020. It was the height of the pandemic and the retired nurse was desperate. Her disability payments were about to end and she was waiting for her social security to start. She had no money for food. Sometimes you are desperate and you don't think things through. Donna says she'd gone online to apply for a small short-term loan against her Pittsburgh area home. Then the phone mm. rang and the caller said he was with a company called MV Realty. I never contacted them. I was looking for a, a loan is what I was looking for. At the time, she didn't know what prompted the call, but she was grateful. And it was like, okay, hey, we'll give you this money. No, no not, you don't have to pay it back. All you have to do is use this as, as an, uh, sell your house. Well, I'm thinking, sell my house. I'm not planning on selling my house. But that wasn't a requirement for MV Realty's homeowner benefit program, which the company marketed online to people in financial trouble. There's a real estate company that will pay you today if you're a homeowner. Within a few hours of that call, Donna says a notary showed up on her front porch after dark. It was late December. And you're outside, it's, it's in the middle of winter, it's cold, it's COVID, you, you know, and you're, you're just wanting, I wanna get back in, I wanna get out of here. She admits she didn't scrutinize the paperwork. The notary said Donna's $550 would be available the next day. It triggered relief because I knew I'd have some money, I could buy groceries. That was what it did. She had forgotten all about MV Realty that night on her porch and the commitment she'd made to use the company as her realtor when she listed her home two years later. And that's how I, I got in this mess. And now I, I'm out 6,000 bucks now because of it. By then, the housing market was hot. It was listed one day, shown one day, and four offers the, the next day. MV Realty FedExed a letter warning Donna she was breaching her contract by using another real estate agent. The homeowner benefit agreement had been filed with the county, preventing her sale. It's a lien. That's what it was. It was a lien. She says she even tried sending back the $550, hoping to cancel the deal, which she says was never fully explained by the salesperson who called her or the notary who showed up at her door later that night. I think they took advantage of me because they knew I was desperate at the time. I couldn't sell the property unless I paid them. MV Realty demanded $5,822, 3% of what the company said was the value of her home thousands more than it actually sold for. MV said the appraisal was 196 based on what? I have no idea. They never went through the house. The only person that ever saw the house was the notary. 
who came and we signed these original forms outside because it was in the middle of COVID. Donna felt like she had no choice but to pay. And, and you feel like you're just being taken, you're being taken advantage of. It's not fair. Especially since MV Realty didn't even have an office in Pittsburgh. There is none, the closest is in Philadelphia. A five hour drive away. They don't have an agent in the area, I don't know how they could. They couldn't have sold it like it was sold. Gladys Wallacek was the real estate agent who actually sold Donna's home, but MV Realty ended up with a bigger commission than she did. In my opinion, they earned zero. It's not right. That's the bottom line. It just is not right. It's appalling. It's absolutely appalling that they would they do that. They made a lot of money off of me. And particularly people that are in my situation where you're retired, you're living on a fixed income, that makes it even worse. Just like Donna, Patricia Bandy went online looking for a small short-term loan and got a call from MV Realty. The company offered her $890. What would you feel about we'll give you the money and you never have to pay it back. And so, of course, that sounds good to anybody, and I know there's a catch. And they said, well, we just want to be your realtor if and when you ever are ready to sell your house. At the time, Patricia had no plans to sell, so the military veteran took the deal. I did receive the contract. I did read it. I understood that I would need to go through MV Realty. But what she didn't understand was the length of that contract. It attached to her property for 40 years, longer than most mortgages. There are parts of the contract that I don't remember being there. When I obtained a copy of it, there are some paragraphs underneath the contract. And one of them is regarding the um, time frame, and the other one is regarding um, the Liz Pendens information. I, I didn't even know what a Liz Pendens was. She would later find out that means legal action. Patricia had always dreamed of living on a farm, and when her father passed away about a year later, she found six acres she wanted to buy. That meant selling her current North Carolina home, so she contacted MV Realty, just like she was supposed to. I called four times in order to get an individual to actually call me back, and I explained that I had one of the contracts, we're ready to go, um, you know, I needed the realtor to come on out, tell me what I needed to do to sell the house, and I didn't get that response. So for 11 days, I contacted the, the realtor that I was assigned. Um, I continuously asked for them to come out and do pictures or tell me what to do. Frustrated, she eventually found a local realtor to list her house instead because she feared she would lose the dream property she was trying to buy. I had to put several thousand dollars down. So I would have lost that money and this house or settle with MV Realty, give them their money so I could move forward. MV Realty filed court papers demanding Patricia pay a 3% penalty, more than $11,000. It's an incredible amount of money, especially when you're middle class working America. And I, I don't know anyone that has that kind of money sitting in a savings account. So it's a sad situation. They're taking advantage of people um, when those people are in a position of needing money fast. MV Realty later disputed Patricia's recollection of events and said it had tens of thousands of clients across 33 states, most of whom are pleased with the company's service. We do enforce our agreements when homeowners violate their contracts, said a spokesperson, but we make sure that homeowners clearly understand the terms of the agreement before signing. There's a sign right there, sign right there, sign right there. And I just kept signing. 76-year-old Julia Henry says she left school in the sixth grade and can't read very well. So she used a voice-to-text function on her cell phone to search online for a government grant to fix her plumbing. Soon after, she heard from a telemarketer. I said, my plumbing is messed up in my home. And I said, I need a grant to try to get it fixed. She said, oh, hmm. She said, okay, but... The grant, I can give you a grant, but it won't be but $500. I said, well, okay, every little bit help. A notary showed up at her house, and she signed MV Realty's agreement in exchange for $425. I wasn't thinking. All I was thinking about the grant, I needed the money. Julia says she never received a copy of the contract and was never told the agreement lasted 40 years. I had no idea about no program, and I had no idea about no real MV Realty. MV Realty sued her after she listed her home with another agent. 
Julia reached out to Atlanta Legal Aid for help, which in turn started researching MV Realty's homeowner benefit agreements. The actual contract is in tiny print, <laughs> uh, filled with legal jargon that is difficult for an attorney who's not a real estate attorney to understand, much less a, a you know your average homeowner. Attorney Dina Franch says MV Realty's contracts seem intentionally confusing and helped Julia fight the company in court. MV Realty called her claim that she can't read dubious at best, but the company ultimately dropped its lawsuit and canceled the lien on her home. But Franch wasn't done. She teamed up with a researcher and law students from Georgia State University to map the homes with MV Realty agreements in Metro Atlanta. They found 71% in majority black neighborhoods. Similar reviews in other cities identified seniors, low income, and people who speak English as a second language as frequent MV Realty customers. It really is unconscionable. Um, it's a very lopsided contract by a, a sophisticated company against unsophisticated homeowners. Many of the homeowners we interviewed across seven states are also elderly, and several said they had cognitive or medical issues that limited their understanding of what they were signing. Almost all said they did not understand the contract would remain in effect for 40 years, or that a lien would be attached to their property. And not one said they'd sought out MV Realty. Instead, they were contacted by a telemarketer or someone knocking on their door. When we come back, how was this Florida-based company finding thousands of customers across the country? An insider speaks out about her role. I felt like I was taking advantage of people. It's horrible. Plus, the famous face behind MV Realty, its reality star founder, next. Florida-based MV Realty spent the past few years racking up tens of thousands of customers across the country. Here's something different. You own a home. A real estate agent pays you immediate cash for the chance to work with you in the future. Homeowners made anywhere from a few hundred to a few thousand dollars, and all they had to do was sign a document saying if they later decided to sell their home, they'd use an MV Realty Realtor. But most of the homeowners we spoke with didn't know that contract would last for 40 years and attached to their property. For me, it raises a lot of concerns about possible legal violations. Sarah Mancini is a lawyer with the National Consumer Law Center, an advocacy group that helps homeowners with debt and mortgage problems. She says homeowners across the country found themselves caught up in the confusion of what amounted to a 40-year lien against their biggest asset, their home. They understood that they were going to get some money, and they were told that they had no obligation to sell their house. Uh, but they did not understand that something was being recorded in the property records against their home um, or the fact that ultimately down the line they could end up owing much more than the money that they were given up front. The contracts say if a homeowner doesn't use MV Realty, they must pay the company 3% of the purchase price as determined by the company. For Sheila Feliciano in Jacksonville, Florida, that amounted to $7,800. Let's be down to earth about this. We're humans. I mean, this could be your mother or your sister that's going through this. Are you kidding me? Are you really serious? This is how it's going. There's no bin. I can't pay my way out of this. I can't give you back your $650. They were like, nope. You signed a contract. She'd accepted the $650 a year earlier after getting a phone call from a telemarketer. I get a lot of... Um, telemarketers calling, and it was like during the COVID era. She says when she later decided to move to Ohio to be closer to her son, MV Realty dragged its feet listing her property, so she went with another realtor. And she said, you can't do it that way. You have a 40-year contract. I was like, excuse me, a four-year contract? She said, 40-year contract, so I would have to die and come back in order to serve that time of the contract to be free of it. Her attorney, Robert Wilbert, says MV Realty's business model is nothing more than a sky-high interest loan. I mean, think about, they give you 650 and you pay back $7,800. If it were explained in simple math like that, nobody would take this deal. The National Consumer Law Center says that point is critical. If this is a loan transaction, which it's, there are a lot of facts that suggest this is really a loan. If, if that's the case, they violated the Truth in Lending Act. 
Our Cox Media Group reporters in Pennsylvania and Massachusetts found what appears to be even more evidence of that when they checked out the documents filed on each home. In those two states, the homeowner benefit agreement is actually called a mortgage right there at the top of the page. The fact that in some places they're actually calling it a mortgage really seems like an admission that this is a loan and they want a security interest in the house because they want to get paid. Um, and they're going to get paid much, much more than what they loaned to the borrower. That point was not lost on the U.S. Senator who leads the Banking and Housing Committee. I'm really glad that Cox is doing this investigation. Um, they're always con artists ready to pounce. You'll hear more from him a little later. First, we should point out that MV Realty says its homeowner benefit agreement is not a lien, but rather a memorandum that serves as a public notice of the homeowner's commitment. But for a time, the company's own website showed that wasn't the case. As recently as October of 2022, the Frequently Asked Questions section read, Do you file a lien on my house? Yes, although in some states it's called a memorandum. Later, MV Realty changed that answer to read, No. Clearly a lot of thought went into their business model, and they're essentially sidestepping um, a number of state and federal regulations and laws. Mark Canner has been a real estate attorney for two decades and had never seen this kind of deal before. What that means is if a homeowner wants to um, tap into the equity in their property and they want to do a cash out refinance, uh, they're going to need a subordination from MV Realty in order to go forward with that. If they don't agree to a subordination, then that homeowner will have to pay 3% of their home is valued to go forward with the refinance. So the company created complicated pathways to make money, even if a property doesn't get listed for sale. I feel bad that um, sometimes you doing something that you're not fully aware of, and then people take advantage of it. This Boston area resident was too embarrassed to show her face, as were many of the homeowners we found across the country. She said she'd been online looking at homes in Florida and then got a call from MV Realty out of the blue. They said, if you want to sell your house, I will, um, you can use me and then I can pay you not to get anybody else. She accepted $1,300, not realizing she could be on the hook to pay thousands. It's predatory. They're going after people who are uh, unsophisticated and susceptible. A spokesperson for MV Realty denied the company targets homeowners who are low income or behind on bills, saying, quote, we do not cold call. We only reach out to prospects who have opted in to receive information from us. But we obtained a trove of internal training materials that tell a different story. Take a look at this MV Realty presentation. It reads, at some point, these homeowners went online and filled out a form requesting some form of financial assistance. MV purchased these leads from various sources. I am calling with MV Realty. Good morning. And what do they do with those leads? This woman was so disturbed by her job with MV Realty, she contacted our news station in Seattle to speak out. I thought it was wrong because we were to bait people. We were to be aggressive in our approach, and it was all about getting them transferred to an agent so that that agent could get them to say yes. As a telemarketer for MV Realty, this whistleblower says she was required to make 450 calls per day to unsuspecting homeowners, often using tactics like phone spoofing to look like the call was coming from a local number. Hi, and welcome to MV Realty. In this training video, we will learn how to properly operate phone burner and disposition calls. In this training video, employees are shown how to use the automated phone dialing program to display a local caller ID. It is very important that you choose local ID v phone to assure the best contact rate. In 2021 and 2022, MV Realty left approximately 6.8 million pre-recorded voicemails, marketing its homeowner benefit agreement across the country. The whistleblower said many of the homeowners she contacted were elderly and people who had recently inquired about refinancing or obtaining a home loan. I felt like I was taking advantage of people. It's horrible. Um, I didn't want to make calls anymore. I didn't want to push these people into something that I knew was just wrong. It was a fast talk and it was a sweet, fast talk. Sheila says she fell for it all and is still fighting to recover. I want to be rid of the contract and rid of MV. Like I want, It's like a bad nightmare I want to wake up from. 
Reporters from eight cities in seven states teamed up to speak with homeowners across the country and searched real estate records to identify more than 12,000 properties with MV Realty contracts. Hundreds of homeowners throughout Ohio, Washington, Massachusetts, and North Carolina, more than 1,200 in Pennsylvania, 3,300 in Georgia, and more than 6,000 homeowners in Florida, where the realty company began operating in 2014. I just found out Alyssa's MVP, which is a lot of power. Just a year earlier, its founder, Amanda Zachman, was a contestant on CBS's reality hit, Big Brother, then known as Amanda Zuckerman. I'm gonna make some money, make that money. According to the company's website, Zachman arranged the signing of the first homeowner benefit agreement in 2017, and the company saw a 300% jump in contracts between 2021 and 2022 topping 32,000 agreements across 33 states. The m most basic necessity you have is shelter. I mean, without that, and, and they're screwing with that. Zachman and the company repeatedly declined our reporters' requests for an on-camera interview to answer questions about the agreements, instead sending lengthy written statements defending the homeowner benefit agreements and the company's business practices, saying they fully comply with the law. After months of reporting, our Jacksonville team made the drive to the company's Delray Beach headquarters. But instead of answering, MV Realty workers called the police. Don't know anything beyond what, what they're telling me. See the full exchange as it happened when we come back. Jacksonville investigative reporter Emily Turner is in Delray Beach, Florida, trying to track down the head of a real estate company called MV Realty, or anyone from the company willing to answer a few questions. For months, reporters from eight cities in seven states have been working together, talking with homeowners who felt taken by the company's offer of quick cash. They know I'm here. I mean, there are five people who have peeked around the corner and then some guy just walked in at a corner office to make a phone call. She could see the workers inside, but no one would even open the door to talk about all of the customer complaints. Instead, they called the police. Don't know anything beyond what, what they're telling me, um, but they're requesting that you leave the property. MV Realty has never agreed to an interview, but across the country, more and more homeowners have, wanting to share their concerns about the company. I don't want anything to do with the people. The very first to speak out lived just up the road from MV Realty in Orlando. Eleanor Gardner called consumer investigator Todd Ulrich in January of 2021. People that want to sell, but they're not ready yet, but whenever they're ready, and uh, they would represent them. She said that was the sales pitch back in March of 2020, and she signed the paperwork giving MV Realty the exclusive right to sell her home someday. The company paid her $1,000. But months went by, and the company failed to send her a copy of the contract she signed. She said when she finally got it, it included pages she'd never seen, including the part about the contract lasting 40 years. So she tried to cancel it. What were the terms of their cancellation? $8,000. From you. From me, if I cancel. They haven't done a thing. Eleanor didn't have to pay the money, but only because she opted not to cancel. I think the strength of this investigation with all our stations will show how widespread this is. When Todd first reported on Eleanor's story in 2021, the program hadn't yet ballooned into the booming business model it later became. But word was spreading. 40 years. That is how long you could be legally. Tied Just a few to months company. later, Atlanta investigative reporter Justin Gray got a call about a homeowner who was sleeping in a motorhome outside her fire damaged house. MV Realty was holding up her sale with a lien. I actually picked up the phone, called down to Orlando to tell Ulrich, and he had just heard about them around the same time. So it turns out we were both looking into MV Realty a couple years ago, and then it came up again. Almost a full year later, Seattle consumer reporter Jesse Jones was reporting on another company with a similar business model. The length of that deal is 40 years, and it can follow you to your grave. That story prompted an email from this telemarketer who saw her chance to blow the whistle. So we went out and talked to her at length about the issues she had with MV Realty. And it was clear that something needed to be done. He called Todd and Justin, and they realized this was much bigger than any of them had known. And I think that is kind of the realm of what we do as consumer reporters. It, Okay, it's legal, but is it right? 
And do consumers actually have a fighting chance with a contract like this? What they uncovered next shocked even these veteran investigative reporters. 40 years may sound like a long time for a contract, but they found even when a homeowner dies, the agreement lives on. That part of the story when we come back. Since 2020, Florida-based MV Realty has signed up more than 35,000 customers for their homeowner benefit program. How did they do it? By paying those homeowners anywhere from a few hundred to a few thousand dollars. In exchange, customers agreed to use the company as their listing agent if they decided to sell their home. But many told us they did not realize that contract lasts for 40 years and acts as a lien on their property. I feel they're taking advantage, big. 86-year-old Betty Wiedenhoff says she was not an MV Realty customer. She had never even heard of the company until it demanded more than $23,000 from her. I don't mind paying something that's, that's honest and above board, but I don't like to be taken advantage of. And here's another one joking around. Betty found herself tangled up with MV Realty while grieving the death of her son, Ron, who passed away in August of 2022. Everything he did made me proud. He was a very, very hard worker. He was very honest. Along with the photos and memories, Ron left behind this Pierce County, Washington home. He'd inherited it from his father in 1986. His dream was to, to fix that just exactly the way he wanted it, inside and out, the whole building. Yep. So he could just sit back and look at it. Look at it. But in April of 2022, Ron was sick with a number of illnesses, including end-stage renal disease. His partner, Alan McPherson, says just two days after Ron arrived home from the hospital, there was a knock on the door. And Betty said, do you want to come in? And he went, no, I'm okay. So he said to us, you know, can you get Ron for us? So we got Ron out there. They didn't know it at the time, but the man asking to see Ron was a notary working on behalf of MV Realty. And they sat on the back porch and signed papers so that neither of us were able to go, hey, don't do that. Ron signed this contract and the company paid him about $2,300. He was not of mind to do that. He was on 35 medications, over 35 medications, m multiple times a day, the same medication three or four times a day. Ron died just four months after he signed with MV Realty. But that contract, oh, it lived on, staying with the property and even transferring to Ron's mom, Betty. Let's see, I Legal aid that. attorney Dina Franch says sometimes it's even worse than that. She's seen MV Realty try to count the transfer to an heir as a sale of the home. If the heirs do not sign an assumption agreement within 10 days of you know, gaining interest in the home, then MV Realty can sue them for breach of the agreement. When Betty made the tough decision to sell the home that had been in the family for decades, she didn't know anything about that MV Realty contract. She used a different realtor, which violated the terms of the agreement Ron had signed. The company called it an early termination and charged a fee of 3%, based not on the actual selling price, but on what the company said the house was worth. They demanded she pay $23,250. I just feel like I've been robbed. What's troubling to me is it seems like there are a lot of ways for this fee, this termination fee, so-called termination fee to be triggered that make that the most likely scenario, much more likely than the company actually acting as a listing agent. Sarah Mancini is co-director of advocacy at the National Consumer Law Center. I think it calls up so many questions about what is the business model really and, and how does this company plan on making money because obviously that would be the ultimate goal. Even worse, the 3% Betty paid was based on MV Realty's value of the home at $775,000, but it actually sold for far less than that, just 530,000. 3% of that would have saved Betty more than $7,000. I want somebody to wring their neck. I really do. I'm appalled at this place. They took advantage of an extremely sick, dying man. An MV Realty spokesperson said the company was never informed by Ron or his family that he was ill and had been in the hospital. 
As for that price difference, the company said the customer pays the higher of 3% of the agreed value or the sales price for the home, adding that it's unusual for those to vary. I want them to have to do right by everybody that they've wronged. And they just might have to. And what we're doing today... Coming up, these stories start to draw attention from local and state officials across the country. I want to look more into it. And MV Realty's business model begins to crack under the scrutiny. Homeowners across the country were stunned to learn they had a lien on their home after accepting just a few hundred dollars from MV Realty. Many said they were never told the deal they signed would last for 40 years. I do think the business model is seems like it's premised on the idea that people will sell their home without remembering that they ever signed this contract and that it comes up in a title search and then it gets paid off. Someone who received $400 is having to pay $5,000 a couple years down the line and they don't even remember that they're, what this was or, or why it's there on their property records. The National Consumer Law Center's Sarah Mancini worried as she watched the company scale up its footprint nationwide, expanding into 33 states. It's concerning because it suggests that a lot of low-income homeowners who are struggling financially may end up um, trapped in one of these contracts unless, uh, unless something is done. Like Pennsylvania homeowner Georgette Snowden, she was baking cookies for her grandson when our reporter knocked on the door. Did they explain all this to you? Did you know there was a lien on your property? No, I didn't know there was a lien. I, wouldn't, I would have never agreed to that if I knew there was a lien. Yeah. Did you know it lasts for 40 years? No, I did not. No, I didn't. What's your reaction? I don't, that's not, it's not good. Yeah. It's not good. Are you, I mean, what's going through your head right now? I sh it's something I shouldn't have done. I, should, I shouldn't have done this. This veteran reporter said it broke her heart to be the one to have to break the news to such vulnerable people. It upsets me personally to see people being taken advantage of, especially when they're targeting people who are low income or elderly, people who are the most vulnerable in our society. And when you see that happening on the scale that it's happening here, definitely we want to see something done about it and take some action. After her calls and emails to the company, MV Realty agreed to work with Ms. Snowden, acknowledging she may not have fully understood what she was signing. So I interviewed a guy named Charles Meredith. He lives here in Dayton. They, they said they're giving people $500. He traded $500 for signing this contract, and he later ended up getting sued by MV Realty because he listed the home with someone else. MV Realty later dropped that lawsuit without explaining why, but property records show the couple was already in financial trouble. Years of tax liens had been sold. They eventually lost their home to foreclosure which by MV Realty's definition can also count as a sale of the property and trigger that 3% fee. There are lots of reasons that property gets transferred, uh, whether it be to a, to a family member, due to a divorce, foreclosure situations, things of that nature. Elizabeth Blosser is vice president of government affairs for the American Land Title Association, or ALTA. She says the trade group for title agents started hearing the name MV Realty popping up at closings all over the country, demanding 3% from sellers who had no idea why. The practice of recording these agreements in the land records is absolutely an attempt to create a lien, and it will add costs and complications to buying, selling, refinancing property. I'm the Montgomery County Recorder. Brandon McLean is also an attorney, a judge, and a real yes. estate agent. He yes. knows a thing or two about home sales. Have you ever heard of a 40-year exclusive listing agent agreement? Never, never. By the time our reporter asked him about it, MV Realty had already filed dozens of its homeowner benefit agreements in his county. A neighboring recorder asked Ohio's attorney general whether they had to accept the company's documents and file them into the property records. His opinion said they did not and gave recorders discretion to determine if the memorandum of contract should be filed. If it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it is a duck. Uh, there are times when individuals may have a document that they form or title as a memorandum, but it has the same legal validity of a lien. MV Realty says its homeowner benefit agreement is not a lien, but a public notice of the homeowner's commitment to give the company the opportunity to represent them in the sale of their home. 
CMG stations showed the agreements to real estate attorneys, legal experts, and consumer advocates in several states. Seattle University law professor Stephen Bender. It runs with the land, and it's a payment obligation, and if that's not a lien, I don't know what it is. Pittsburgh attorney Jim Herb. In my opinion, it's not legal because I think it's, it's deceptive. I think they're getting away with it because, uh, you know, no one has challenged them on it yet. That was all about to change. Up next, a barrage of legal, legislative, and regulatory action against MV Realty and what that could mean for the tens of thousands of homeowners across the country already locked into contracts. And what really caught Building on our thought, prior reporting from 2021, now this company, MV Realty, they say, and a new whistleblower who regretted recruiting clients for MV Realty's homeowner benefit program. I thought it was wrong because we were to bait people, we were to be aggressive in our approach. Cox Media Group television stations in eight cities worked together, investigating more than 12,000 liens and featuring everyday homeowners desperate for answers. I do think it's very significant that there has been so many stories um, and consumer investigations into this because it really is propelling the uh, con conversation. In Massachusetts, Georgia, Washington, Florida, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and Ohio, our reporters contacted the attorneys general to ask about consumer complaints against MV Realty, as story after story revealed more people with their home equity handcuffed to a realty company for decades. They've got to be stopped. They have to be stopped because they are preying on people that are desperate is what they're doing. MV Realty's home state of Florida was the first to file. Attorney General Ashley Moody's lawsuit called the company's business model a complex and deceptive scheme that attempts to skirt existing Florida law with the goal of swindling consumers out of their home equity. Weeks later, Massachusetts and Pennsylvania followed suit. People don't expect that a mortgage lien is gonna be recorded on their property just for signing up to use a company as your real estate agent. It's far outside the norm of, of industry standards. In Pennsylvania, then Attorney General Josh Shapiro said homeowners fell victim to MV Realty's calculated deception in hiding the terms of the homeowner benefit program, calling the company a scam. He asked the court to halt any new homeowner benefit agreements, to strike all existing MV Realty mortgages, and to order restitution for those who've suffered losses. His news release included a comment from this Pittsburgh area resident who learned he had a lien on his home from our reporter. I hate being taken advantage of. Ohio, New Jersey, Indiana, and North Carolina also sued MV Realty, a total of seven attorneys general trying to put a stop to the company's contracts. Predatory real estate companies that target vulnerable people are not only appalling, they're violating our state law. North Carolina's Attorney General cited WSOC-TV in Charlotte's coverage for exposing what homeowners there were facing. We've had complaints come into our office because they saw your stories. And we can only bring these kinds of cases when we know what's happening on the ground here in North Carolina through consumer complaints. And so we appreciate your reporting. And while those lawsuits were piling up at the state level, leaders in Washington were also taking note. I'm really glad that Cox is doing this investigation. Um, there are always con artists ready to pounce. Ohio Senator Sherrod Brown and others sent this letter to the Federal Trade Commission and Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, calling on the agencies to investigate MV Realty. I think that any company that's that's you know generally accused with evidence of doing what MV Realty has done uh, needs to have oversight from Congress and the courts, and we're working to do that. The letter urges the agencies to review whether these listing agreements and business practices violate federal consumer protection laws, including prohibitions against unfair, deceptive, or abusive acts and practices, and to take appropriate action where violations are found. MV Realty responded, saying it welcomes the opportunity to engage in discussions with policymakers and regulators to address concerns and clear up misconceptions about its business practices. But the company's troubles continued mounting. Remember that telemarketer who was so upset by her time working for MV Realty? I felt like I was taking advantage of people. It's horrible. Um, I didn't want to make calls anymore. 
After making roughly 450 calls per day to unsuspecting homeowners often using high-pressure sales tactics, she reported the company to federal investigators. I turned them into the um, FCC because they're using a spoofer. When we interviewed her in 2022, she couldn't say much about the investigation, but she did talk about the company's use of technology to spoof local phone numbers and its extensive robocalling operation. Nine months later, the Federal Communications Commission's robocall response team announced enforcement action, calling MV Realty, quote, an apparent homeowner-focused robocall scam campaign. We knew we needed to take some sort of action to protect consumers. After hearing of closings and refinances across the country being held up by these contracts, the American Land Title Association drafted model legislation and urged local legislators to sponsor bills. The goal is all 50 states, and there's a lot of momentum on this issue. So far, 17 states have scrambled to pass new laws banning or severely limiting these types of agreements. The language varies a little by state, but generally aims to make the contracts unenforceable. I'm really glad the bill passed and hopefully things are much better going forward. But what about the tens of thousands of people who already have existing contracts? More on that when we come back, plus a surprising announcement from the company. Earlier this year, Florida-based company MV Realty said it would voluntarily stop signing any new contracts with homeowners across the country while it examined the language in its agreements. Mounting lawsuits and legislation raised questions about the legality of the business model, which offered homeowners quick cash while locking up their property with an exclusive listing agreement and a lien for up to 40 years. Critics called it a scam to siphon hard-earned home equity away from vulnerable homeowners. I think their scheme is to, they do not want to sell the home for you. They don't want anything with the home. What they want is waiting at the end or at closing just to collect their money. Disabled Navy veteran Ira Doran paid MV Realty more than $9,000 after the company said he broke his contract in Georgia. I want somebody to wring their neck. In Washington, Betty Wiedenhoff paid more than $23,000 just to be able to sell her son's home after he passed away. In North Carolina, Patricia Bandy paid the company more than $11,000 to avoid a long fight that could have cost her her dream home. What they did essentially was try to stop us from having our piece of what we consider to be the American dream. In September, MV Realty filed for bankruptcy protection in 33 states, shortly after the Florida Attorney General made an aggressive move. This injunction is asking a judge to freeze MV Realty's operations and assets. But even after all of that, as recently as November of 2023, the company was still advertising its homeowner benefit program online. A person who answered the phone wouldn't say whether their deal is still available. An MV Realty spokesperson did not respond when asked whether the company is still planning to enforce the tens of thousands of existing agreements. In a bankruptcy, you're carving up assets. So are these contracts an asset that needs to be sold for the benefit of the estate, or can we convince a bankruptcy court that these contracts are not valid and they're, and they're fraudulent? She says the type of bankruptcy suggests the company will try to restructure rather than wind down but it will ultimately be up to the court to decide what to do. I just want the uh, contract tore up and gotten rid of. And that's my big concern, you know. I just want it gone. As of this report, several of the families we featured still aren't sure what will happen with their contracts. MV Realty has declined numerous requests for an on-camera interview, but repeatedly defended its business model, saying it fully complied with all laws. <laughs>